with our cellular phones. But another thing, so now, like all this, uh, di this research could be used in the in the field propulsion. Um, this uh, that I discover, in fact, very close. I use, uh, in fact, in the pattern application that I make, I, uh, I propose uh, Tesla, uh, three uh, three phase Tesla coil to generate uh, such kind of. Uh, a high voltage properly uh, electromagnetic that activate, but this is, this is not for for the Earth application. Uh, even UFO technology is not for replacement of the airplanes. Many think that uh, yeah, it could replace airplane. It is not. It has uh, electromagnetic side effect. It has even a, a harmful uh, uh, effect for the for the living organism in the close distance. So it is for it. Uh, it is for the trips in the space, not for... Um, the, is, it, is it possible to create some sort of shielding effect, though, if, if it was to use for purposes here on Earth? In fact, uh, they, they were for in the... Uh, you mean shielding effect from this uh, scalar yeah. wave or longitudinal wave? Yeah. Especially for the UFO, it, it could not be shielded because it is workable. Effect. But if uh, this some kind of technology is used uh, in the, another field, for example, uh, in the in the states, uh, this kind of technology, plasma, activated, is used for uh, purifying the water or killing some microorganisms. Mm -hmm. Then it could be used some shielding, uh, special shielding effect for shielding from uh, longitudinal waves. Well, the, yeah, there, I mean, as far as if we're going to talk about UFOs, th there must be some kind of shielding because if there are occupants within the craft that are moving, um, they, they either have to be of a completely different biological nature. Oh, the shielding or, is different. The shielding is different when it is inside or is outside. Okay. The inside uh, volume could be easier shielded. Than outside the ball. I think you, you you ask about the outside. Outside is not ball, but inside ball is possible to be shielded by okay. the special design of the of the craft. Of the craft. Okay. Of the craft. Okay. So um, this could cause uh, this could cause problems to health if you were close to the craft. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. I think that it has been cases that. Uh, People apparently get uh, some kind of uh, unknown uh, injury effects from the UFO very close proximity. I think one in Canada, the Falcon case. I have only read another case in Brasilia. Right, right. Okay, so there, there. Yes, we do, we do know in the UFO literature that uh, there's been some testing and some and some problems with health. Uh, I believe there's a. Do you remember the name of the case, Tom? The mother and the uh, daughter, um, both. Uh, the cash landrum. Yeah. Cash landrum. Yeah. yeah. When when the object uh, was either being followed or carried by the some helicopters, uh, and uh, when it passed overhead, then they came out and mm -hmm. they got affected by it. Uh, burnt the car too, yeah. didn't it? The, burnt the paint off the car. Yeah. Well, there was uh, something mm -hmm. similar to a burning effect. Yeah. Okay. So and, uh, eventual sickness and so on. And, uh, maybe I think maybe they have even uh, some kind of field for protection, and to turn on in, in case of uh, they could be persuaded. Because in the literature, yeah, yeah. as a case is that uh, military fighters try to uh, to make or to to hit the the UFO and they suffered of some kind of disintegration or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so with your experiment, you've taken your, I know that you've taken your experiment to a certain level and that there are more that you can do with it. And uh, you need a, a bigger lab and you need more, uh, more energy. Is that correct? You've gone to a certain point and now you want to take it to the next level. Yeah, to take to the next level... Uh, because in this level now I just uh, show effect existence of the effect demonstrated, but it is very weak. Mm 
it is not to optimize the, in order also to measure the some quality uh, qualitative measurements to take to the next step it, it needs a first a special environment lab and uh, some funding more significant funding because it should be done in the uh, professional way uh, and also simultaneously to take precaution for the possible harmful effect mm -hmm. and I elaborate so, this uh, so how, how, how big uh, uh, of an effect or, or I mean uh, you were saying about you, you had 25,000 volts but how much voltage would you need to create a bigger experiment and be able to show this in, in a much better way uh, it, it may go up about 500,000 Maybe half a million, million volts. So in, maybe in one hundred thousand. So, but the effect is very dependent. It, it increases uh, with the power, maybe power of third or between two and third with the with the voltages. And not only the voltages, but uh, the used uh, uh, gas substance uh, to to activate, uh, and also the, the the activation mechanism of this electromagnetic. There is a lot of. Uh, uh, specific features mm -hmm. in the design that is contemplated. So, it, so in order to, to conduct this, this experiment on a larger scale, how much money would be needed to conduct it in a proper lab? In the first, in the, in the first case, uh, no less than $100,000. Okay. So we need it just to make the next uh, stage experiment okay. and to show and, more, and, and more those, measurable and, effect. And such labs are, are available here in Toronto? Uh, such in the Toronto, Grand Toronto area, there is a place that could be fine for such proper lab. You think the universities would be doing this and just covering the, and, and then, uh, maybe I don't know the way universities work, but you think they'd be doing this experiment and, you know, funding it? Themselves. Yeah, but not, 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 not if, it, if it goes out from, from the uh, norm of... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know, I'm just, I'm just saying, I know, you know. For example, no, I don't. I know the, the university where I'm working. There is not such environment, and uh, even uh, the many university now, uh, the the high voltage equipment uh, in many laboratories is thrown out because uh, with these computers, we, the, the tendency to use very very low voltages. So it's an, in a different direction. It's a different right. direction. It has to be some uh, special. Special type of lab, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, we want to basically put it out to the public out there, or anybody who might be interested in getting involved with uh, Stoyan, um, whether scientist or uh, philanthropist or anybody who uh, can help. Um, they can get in contact with us, and we can put you on to Stoyan, or you can go directly to uh, his website, which um, we will be having probably on the on the uh, past it's, yeah, uh, guest page. It's on the website now, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so we hope um, that uh, your work can continue and, uh, you know, we can expect big things from it and maybe that uh, might be our future and, uh, you know, the new new approach to space flight. Who knows? That maybe there, there's lots of universities all over the world. BBS Radio mm -hmm. is yeah. listened to in every, in every country. You just, you never know who's going to pop up and say, you know, sure, we'll do that experiment. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I think that in today, the, the super highway information, in fact, in a number of places in the world could uh, initiate something. It is a question, could be here or could be somewhere, another place, uh, because it's not possible to conceal something that uh, already has been tested, some information. It is distributed on somebody. And you've already could. proven it in your lab experiments. You have yeah, in my lab experiment, I, I just proved that there is a mechanism. Uh, I also discovered this uh, heterodyne resonance mechanism that uh, I see now but my communication in the Internet in a number of places in different countries. They investigate and get a similar result, not, not just for the proportion mechanism, but this effect in the plasma that has not been envisioned before. Right. right. It's right. in the plasma. Well, we hope that uh, your work continues, and we're going to support it with as much uh, as we can, and hope yeah. to have you on again in the very near future. Yeah. And any individuals that want to get a hold of uh, 
Mr. Sarg, they can certainly contact us, and uh, we will pass them on. And uh, we're going to come to an end right now, and hopefully we'll uh, see you guys again. I want to thank uh, Mr. Sarg. Okay, uh, thank you. I thank you, Tom and Scott, for this uh, possibility to, to express my vision yep. hey, and my work. I'm, I'm glad you. to have you, you on. You never know, Tom. I mean, with all the stuff coming out now with uh, uh, the governments that are um, putting the UFO files out, yeah, there does seem to be some sort of openness to this sort of thing nowadays. I mean, not, not, so, much, not so much 20 years ago. Uh, there was a, a video you sent me about uh, a government that released all of the UFO files. What was that latest one? Was it Nor- uh, From Ecuador. Ecuador, yeah, the Ecuadorian yeah. government. Man, and, that's and it's it's some great stuff, and people should uh, definitely check it out. Oh, this is uh, when this was released. Uh, with the last uh, few weeks. Oh, uh, so it is uh, more recent than the the nooks and where for disclosure in uh, yeah. September. Oh, definitely yeah. more more recent than that. Oh, and I will be putting it up on the news page if people want to check it out. It was mm-hmm. an absolutely brilliant video. Um, oh, just amazing, the stuff that, yeah. they, and and what was interesting, just on a side note about that, was the the government got involved, the the yeah. president mm-hmm. of the country president wrote mm-hmm. letters mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. to the guy, one of the lead investigators in UFO field, wrote letters telling the military, listen, you need to tell this guy everything you know. He's allowed to go on any military base, do anything he wants, take any reports he wants. It's really yeah. a quantum leap in, in your point. Yeah, this is very interesting. In fact, we live in very interesting uh, era. Yeah, it's a new, new discovery. This could be uh, kind of uh, uh, greater than the great uh, geographical discoveries because it will pave a way to the, uh, to the space, to other planets or yeah. to, to satellite of the planets of our solar system. I totally yeah, agree. Sure. You know what? Humans are destined to be in space. Yeah. You know, every culture, every 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 planetary culture has to go through an evolutionary process. And that evolutionary process um, at some point reaches uh, colonization of space. Getting out there and doing your own thing, you know, and uh, exploring new areas and doing research outside of Earth's atmosphere. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. And um, there's no need or reason to be hung back on these these uh, crass energy systems that we're using now, and coal and and, and nuclear and, and all of this stuff. It's just we're so far beyond that. If we just will, will do it. And I think that that's coming. I think that that we're just on the tipping edge of that. And hopefully that there's people out there that. Uh, will be open to your research and look into it a little bit further. Okay, thank you. It's thank my you. pleasure. Thanks for Bye-bye. thanks for joining us and we'll catch you guys next week. Next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.